Hey guys, Tom here from the Investing with Tom YouTube channel. Welcome back to the channel. If you enjoyed today's video, hit like, hit subscribe, and that way you can see future videos as well. So it looked like everyone seemed to enjoy, uh, for the most part, my uh, top three investing tips video from Owners Pabri from earlier in the week. So I'm going to continue on with this series. Uh, this video is going to be all about Phil Town, as you will have seen from the title, uh, and the top three investing lessons that I personally have picked up from Phil Town. So let me know in the comments down below who you'd like to see next. Uh, but for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and let's get straight into it. So if you don't know who Phil Town is, uh, Phil Town is an individual investor over in the US who has written uh, several of the books you often see sitting behind me. So uh, his very famous book is Rule One. He's also written Payback Time. And in more recent times, he's written a book called Invested with his daughter, Danielle Town. So Phil also runs the Invested Podcast with his daughter, Danielle. Uh, and all of these are great resources to uh, really learn some of the basics of investing uh, in a Warren Buffett uh, modern value investing sort of style. How to identify a great business and how to figure out all the steps that you should go through to analyze that business and figure out which price to pay before making an investment. So um, all those are great resources and I highly recommend checking them out. Now for me, Phil Town was one of the first people that really turned uh, what Warren Buffett said in terms of how to go about investing in the stock market into practical and sort of actionable uh, advice so he was the first person that really helped me understand okay intrinsic value is not just this hypothetical concept you can actually calculate it uh, and make estimates on the intrinsic value of companies um, a moat is not something that just Warren Buffett talks about with protecting the business here are some sort of practical examples of what a moat actually looks like and here are some things that I look for in management of the company and that is really the first thing that I learned from Phil Town is what he would call his 4M analysis. Now, his 4M analysis, you will see me pretty much go through on every stock analysis video I do on the channel. Uh, and that is going through meaning. In other words, do we understand the business? Moat, in other words, does it have some sort of competitive advantage, which will allow it to be bigger in 10 years than it is today? Uh, management, who's running the company? And margin of safety, so what is the business actually worth to um, a private owner or a rational sort of buyer? And what price should we be willing to pay as people that demand a margin of safety and really high returns through our stock market investments? Now this 4M analysis has added a lot of structure to the way that I analyze businesses personally um, and it's been really really useful and originally it actually came from Charlie Munger, I'll leave a link down in the description below to a very short video from Charlie Munger where he basically details this process uh, and Phil Town has sort of picked that up and run with it and it's been a great tool for me to work through uh, personally and just make sure that I'm not missing any major components when I'm analyzing a business. So. When I'm looking at the meaning, is this truly in my circle of competence? Do I really understand this business just as well as I would understand buying a piece of real estate down the road? Uh, when I look at the moat, we're given some sort of practical examples of how businesses can have moats, how they can have competitive advantages. So um, Phil talks us through things like um, great brands. So think Coca-Cola or Apple. Um, things that have a switching moat, in other words, it's just a pain to switch away from that other company. So think, uh, again, Apple, um, they have sort of this Apple ecosystem where all your data is stored. Um, and it makes it just very difficult and sort of painful to switch, a great, switch away to other brands of cell phone or computer and that sort of thing. Um, network effects, so think Facebook, you know, the fact that Facebook has such a large number of users at this point is really a huge competitive advantage, a huge competitive advantage and keeps other social networks um, kind of away for the most part. You can't just have the average guy down the street start up a social media company and have it displace Facebook for the most part. So I'm um, looking at, and identifying some examples of those sorts of businesses. Management, so first we're wanting to look at whether this management team has uh, both skill and integrity. Um, Phil taught us to, to look at some certain metrics on those things as well. So we're looking at things like a high return on equity, a high return on invested capital, and both of those two metrics growing over time. So we understand that capital has been allocated very, very efficiently within the business, and it's helping the equity of the shareholders to grow over time. 
And finally, the fourth M is margin of safety. So Phil has taken us through uh, really three main ways of identifying the value of a business. The first one is a sticker price and margin of safety calculator of which we've got a video on the channel. Um, the second one is through payback time. So if I put um, you know, my money into that business today, how long is it going to take me to get my money back? And the third one is an owner earnings or a 10 cap method. So again, looking at a business like a piece of real estate, um, trying to figure out what sort of price we would have to pay in order to get a 10% return in year one. And if we're buying into a high quality business, that return should grow over time. So my second tip that I picked up from Phil Town, um, again, in my pretty early days of trying to understand how to go about this whole investing thing, is the concept that uh, we can buy something for less than it's worth and we can create this unique setup of low risk and high return. Now, usually when you look at investments, um, the efficient market kind of camp will tell you that you can either have low risk and low return or you can have high risk and high return. You can't have the best of both worlds. You can't have a low risk and a high return. Well, Value investing kind of throws that idea out the window and Phil Town was one of the first people that showed me how to think about that practically. And it basically comes down to buying businesses that are trading below what their long-term intrinsic value is. So if something is worth $100 a share and we pay $100 a share for it, um, we're potentially gonna get a good return if that business does well, um, but we're also taking a reasonable amount of risk. So if something doesn't go well, um, that stock price can come down to, you know, 90 or 80 or 70 or 60 or 50 dollars a share um, it can keep going down all the way to zero if the business were to go bankrupt so um, when we pay up full price for a company we do have this um, potentially good return um, but we also do have uh, a, a risk there as well Whereas when we buy something at a discount to intrinsic value, we start to reduce our risk. So the amount of cash that that business has to return to us as shareholders if we pay a lower price is dramatically reduced and that gives us a margin of safety. Now that margin of safety protects us from further downside. Uh, that's not to say your stocks won't go down from time to time, but if you've made a good decision uh, or done some good analysis on valuation and you turn out to be correct, then really over the long term, you should have a lot of protection from downside, but you also have this extra upside because you can now get this sort of pop from going from buying something for 50 cents on the dollar back up to full price. So it creates this unique scenario for low risk and high reward. Um, and that's what value investing is all about. And Phil Town was really the first one to uh, get that message deep inside my brain and help me fully understand how that would work. Now the third and final main lesson that I've picked up from Phil Town is something that he calls stockpiling. Um, in other stock market circles, it might be called something like averaging down. Uh, and it was, a th it was an idea that Phil wrote about in his book, Payback Time. And it's basically the, the idea that if you buy into a stock and it goes down, that is great news. So uh, when a stock goes down, typically for most people, after they've already bought it, they're like, ah, oh, crap, I'm losing money. You know, this investment's gone down the toilet, all these different really bad ideas. You know, maybe I should sell it so that it doesn't go down further and all these things that, uh, generally speaking, are quite bad for your long-term returns. Um, Whereas Phil takes the uh, takes the viewpoint that if a stock goes down, um, let's say you think it's worth 100, you were able to buy it at 50, and it goes down to 30, and you still think it's worth 100 if nothing has fundamentally changed in the business, then the stock price going down is great news for the long-term investor because it allows you to get a larger position in that company, buy more shares in the company, uh, at what looks like an even more attractive return. So you already thought you were gonna get maybe 15% a year returns over the future um, by buying it at 50 cents on the dollar, but if you can buy the stock at, at 30 cents on the dollar, um, that creates the opportunity for much higher returns again. So the idea of stockpiling and, and averaging down is basically just to take advantage of falling stock prices, lower your average cost basis into a business. Um, and now when I buy into a company, I really am fingers crossed that uh, it, it does go down over time. I don't typically put in all my money that I want to invest in a stock in one hit, I typically spread that out over three or four sort of tranches um, and buy in over a period of um, really a few months is the way I've uh, approached it recently. 
um, and it allows me to hopefully get a lower cost basis, take advantage of more volatility in the market, uh, and over time that can do really, really good things for your returns. So I do have uh, at least one video on stockpiling, which again, I'll leave linked in the, down in the description, and that actually walks through some practical examples of some maths behind how um, stockpiling and averaging down your price can turn a what's already pretty good rate of return into a phenomenal rate of return, and that over time can have a really good uh, positive benefit on your net worth and on your investing returns. So there you have it. Those are my top three lessons from Phil Town. First, we had the four M's. Next, we had been able to buy a dollar for 50 cents and thinking about that margin of safety. And third and final, we had stockpiling or averaging down your price. So those are my top lessons from Phil Town. Uh, again, if you think I've missed anything or you have other lessons from Phil Town, drop them down in the comments below. Um, and also let me know who you would like to see in this series next uh, on our top three tips from Guru Investors. So that's all for me today. I do hope you enjoyed the video if you did please hit like and hit subscribe you can watch some older videos over there hit subscribe over there if you haven't already and i will see you in the next one cheers